Hello and welcome to a new educational and or entertaining video brought to you by Mage, one of the newest apps for trading and or managing your collection, as well as MTG Mint Card, one of the largest retailers of card games in the Asia Pacific area. So today, if you've read my article uh, from last week, you'll know that I'm very much into Feather, specifically of the Naya variety. And um, that article actually has the entire deck guide, including sideboard guide and tips and tricks and such. So I won't go into too much detail here, it's mostly for the gameplay. Uh, but the deck is just built around Feather, uh, trying to target it with, uh, you know, getting value from Defiant Strike and Reckless Rage. And this version also gets to play Season of Growth to uh, be able to obtain value from these cards even when you don't draw Feather, which is a pretty big deal. And I haven't so far felt like the, the mana base, free card of mana base, um, deducts too much from the consistency. Also, I think that Thorned Tenant and Ghoul Spellbreak are just excellent creatures. So that's what we're working with. The sideboard here, it's a little bit chewed against um, Nexus right now, uh, but I could see that we want to... Uh, make it more tuned against stuff like the scapeshift decks that are popping up lately because uh, the metagame is changing of course So maybe the sideboard is a little bit outdated now, but um, you will see how it goes I'll just jump into some traditional rank play here Yeah, obviously you just cut out this part. Okay, game one here against two bears, one cup. Um, will not comment on that name and we want the die roll okay so this hand doesn't have red mana and I think we just ship it for that reason um, and to all the haters saying that oh this is what you get for playing three colors if this hand was the if this was the the red white version what we would have is just shock God's winning the fine strike tenth district and three planes so the difference is not relevant there in comparing the two decks because uh, you still have the same amount of white and red sources. I actually have slightly a bit more because this deck plays 24 lands, which I think is totally reasonable in the archetype. This hand, though, is pretty great. I'm going to ship away the Spellbreaker, um, the only card we can't cast with the lands we currently have. And I really want to, uh, you know, get the Season of Growth going with God's Willing and Legionnaire and Arcanist and such. So this the Spellbreaker, we don't really need this, so I'm just going to keep six cards and ship away this one. We also get to lead on Temple. We do have to shock ourselves, but that's just the nature of uh, things. You can see that our opponent has been in the Mythic Championship Qualifier, so at least there are no slouch. And if I ship the Spellbreak, I'm also shipping Thorn Attendant. Do not need these cards here. Um, I might want to lead on Season of Growth here, because I do have the Gods Willing to protect my things. But if I'm against, uh, looks like, Bant Scape Shift, I'll uh, probably just run out my stuff here. Depending a little bit on what I draw, I might just lead on Arcanist. And then we can figure things out from there. I might want to play Legionnaire over the Season next turn. Just to get in some more damage, because I think that having a clock is very relevant in this matchup. Also, the God's Winning can be pretty important for breaking through an army of zombies. Though, okay, so they don't have any more lands in hand. It's really important. Ah, huh, second Legionnaire. I think here... I want to... Huh, I can do this in multiple ways. I can play Season of Growth now. Attack with my Arcanist and give it protection from green. Just to get in a point of damage. At that point, it might just be better to respond to a Teferi. Yeah, I think that would be better. But I can still bounce my Season of Growth. But then I get to kill the fairy. Yeah, I think I like that. Uh, I, I give up a point of damage here, but I play Season of Growth, gets to cast God's Willing to draw a card. Then next turn, I can go Legionnaire, attack, and flashback the God's Willing. 
and maybe deploy another Legionnaire or maybe do something else. The alternative line is to play Legionnaire, attack, and if they block, I get to God's Willing to kill their creature. Um, and then next turn, I go Season of Growth plus God's Willing. No, I think that line does seem better. We do get to clear off a Grazer and we do get to Squire twice, so I'm all about that line. Uh, should have tapped differently though, keeping up the red white land, just to represent more things. Okay, so they could have to ferry here, but I'm okay. Ooh, Defiant Strike is definitely something we want here. So I'm just gonna hold on to... Uh, Oh, see if I can maintain this God's Willing in the graveyard. And um, yeah, to be able to defeat like uh, a large scapeshift later. What they're aiming to do is cast scapeshift, finding a field of the dead. And a bunch of lands that are not called the same thing. And they'll make like 7 zombies if they do it with 7 lands. So they'll make 36 zombies by getting 2 field of the dead if they have 8 lands. Um, not 36 zombies, 16 zombies, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but 16 zombies is plenty to kill us, unless we can use pro black to uh, get our legionnaire through. Okay, so here, I think I just want to start going off. So that would involve... Defiant striking this one. Maybe I actually give it protection from green now. Ooh, the reckless rage is pretty good too. I think we just top that. Because I think that clearing away the blockers here is going to be very... Uh, Important. Okay. Did not hit the red source. Yeah, I think I just wanted to find strike right now. Um, grow it a little bit more and then we wait with the gods willing. Okay. Definitely want another fine strike though. And potentially I should have played my Sun Pillar Grove, but it's worse if I draw the land. So we also drew the feather here so we can really go off now. Uh, I do want to note that we have feather with Arcanist, which means that. We are probably better off um, casting our Defiant Strike first, like here in their end step. And then we play Feather and use the Arcanist to bring back the Defiant Strike. Alright, so they cast Circuitous Route now. So they might uh, set up for uh, a big scape shift now. But I think actually we are very adept to at beating the scape shift. So I wouldn't be too worried about this. Uh, let's just go to the end step before we cast things. Because yeah, the way that Arcanist and Feather works is that you do get the card back. And I do think we want another land here, so... Because we're drawing so many cards that we just really want the mana sources to cast them. Um, I want to tap white, white, red. I'm not going to use green mana. Scry, sure thing. I think we need that right now. Get to kill the Grazer. So we're gonna get in for quite a bit of damage with this Legionnaire. And uh, I hope this sound isn't too loud. Probably not. And um, I guess I definitely should have checked that. Oh well. Oh well. So now I get to attack here for what, 10 damage? In total, once we flash back this Defiant Strike, and you'll see what I mean, that it, it'll come right back to our hand. Because that's the way Feather works with Arcanist, it's pretty beautiful. Also, I should probably um, pay more attention to how I scry there. And that's the God's Willing, so I feel super protected now. But still, like we still have the one in the graveyard. Um, so even if they do go for a giant scape shift, make 16 zombies, we could just attack with uh, Arcanist and... <laughs> Man, so many cards in hand. Just got down to seven, so there's only one card. Okay, well, let's get rid of Spellbreaker. I guess we should have kept Spellbreaker in case they have a Sweeper. But even then, I think we attack for lethal with this Legionnaire, so it doesn't matter. But if they do cast Scapeshift and make 16 zombies, attack with Arcanist, attack with Legionnaire, Give this one protection from black, and it'll just attack through. So, and even if they have another blocker, we can probably still manage it. Okay, so they're actually gonna make... I don't even know how many zombies. Uh, it's... They have 9 lands now, so it's 27 zombies. 
Nine times three. All right, well, let them go through the motions. Um, they are infected on board. They are gonna gain, be able to gain some life because there are some life gain lands in the deck, but they're gonna go to like nine and it's, uh, or like 12 maybe, but it's still not enough. Because this legionnaire is giant. And yeah, even if they all did also draw a, a random green blocker, we just also kill that, so we're pretty safe. Oh wait, they come into play untapped? Why is this blast zone untapped? It was found with skate shift, right? And skate shift put lands into play tapped, so is that a bug? Huh, it's very interesting. Well, uh, let's just resolve all. <laughs> and uh, we watch as the zombie army grow. Well, it's really hard to see that it grows. There's just like this tiny little number. I do not know why it's so tiny. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it's gonna keep growing and then, then we're gonna attack for lethal. So that, that is just the way it is. All right, 28 zombies was made in total. Why is it 28? Why is this number so tiny? Oh, because they already had one play from when they played the field. Gotcha. All right, well, um, you can also, in those spots, you could shock your own dis legionnaire to get the extra counter. Um, oh, I'll just, just attack. It was a lot to go through for um, basically no outcome. It's very interesting that a blast zone came into play untapped. I don't know what to make of that. Because if the cards you're usually fetching with your escape shift like are gonna be tap lands anyway, it just might not be something people notice. All right. Well, in this matchup, is the honor guard good? It stops the the elf. Thorn Lieutenant does seem pretty weak. I assume they play some sweepers in the sideboard. So I think I want a Johnny. And they do play to Fairy. Uh, but I don't think we want the Veil of Summer. Cindervines also seems pretty poor. Yeah, I mean, like, there's not really much we need. Um, the Shocks seem pretty bad, so I'll just cut those. The Reckless Rages aren't great either. Um, but they still clear out blockers, so maybe they're just fine. And yeah, I don't really like Thorny Tenant, but maybe it's better than Socatli? Not sure. I wonder if there's any other ETB effects. Like, there's obviously the Grazer. Um, it doesn't stop the Field of the Dead. Because it doesn't stop lands. Hmm. I think... We might want Fry. Do you have stuff like Lyra in the sideboard? Even if you do, I think you can beat it. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm just gonna resubmit this. I don't really see how much more pressure we can get into this deck. And maybe we'll see some other card... Oh, they also have um, Hydra Crisis, right, right, right. So maybe Fry is good, but I think it's better to have Reckless Rage. And Dobby's Ambush, I think, is better too. Dobby's Ambush is just so great in this deck. Um, this hand can cast its spells. It's a little mediocre though. It's actually quite mediocre. I think I might mulligan this one. Um, yeah, just play some creatures and then we probably die. Then you'll probably make a bunch of zombies and like, we won't be able to break through that. It's quite slow and doesn't have any tricks. No feathers, no, um, season. This is probably like the best matchup for seasonal growth. Because it's like, how much we go over the top is super important. Um, and... Seasonal growth let us do exactly that. And we only play two in this version, so that's a little bit knock against it in this matchup. So I think we just small again. Here we do have the season, but our hand is unplayable. Uh, maybe you could keep it anyway. The upside is pretty high here. I think not though. But it also have like everything we need basically. Uh, but we kind of also want a third land anyway. Yeah, I'm not quite sure we'll get better on five. I think this hand is better. So we ship the Sacred Foundry and a Legionnaire. So we have the pieces we need, but I think this hand is better than our uh, 
Or initial hand. Like, we have two fewer lands, but Arcanist and Feather are just so much better than the Thorny Tenants. And, uh, <laughs> call him and he comes. <laughs> the Thorn Lieutenant. Uh, I don't know. I do want to land. But at what cost? At what cost? I think I'm going to ship this one. I really want something to get our feather going. We do still have a couple draw steps to get toward the land. And I, I thought we didn't think we needed it right away. Okay, there's something. I wonder how we sequence this one now. Thorn and Senate is the best thing if they have the fairy. Um, but even then, we might just be able to go Legionnaire God's Willing if we do draw the land next turn. I think I want to have the Legion in play. Well, there's no reason to attack. They're definitely gonna block, so. So they do have to ferry, so there's no reason to stop my upkeep. My oh, are they gonna bounce their own Abroil Grazer? Huh. In that case, I'm definitely casting God's Willing in the upkeep. Yeah, I guess that's a play that comes up pretty often. Oh, they just plus it. Okay. Uh, so I can't cast it upkeep anyway, so I'll just draw. Land? Ooh, nice. Okay. So, worth noting that Teferi stops our Arcanist. From flashing back anything. Um, but I think we're gonna be okay with that. Don't really want the land either. Right, so we're gonna take the fair down to two here, play our Arcanist, and then like we're not gonna be able to We're not gonna be able to flash it back, but at least it does stuff. Oh if they have circuit shooters out here. I've got it. One, two, three, four, five different names. Yeah, so they can they can certainly route into making two zombies at instant speed here. That's pretty powerful. And then they get to double block our Legionnaire. Hmm. I wonder if I should play around that. And if I even can. Like, if, if that's a profitable situation for me. I think I'll just play around it. The I don't think the Legionnaire attacks accomplish as much. Also, there was. A I was thinking I could shock to uh, bluff God's Willing, but I can't cast it anyway because it's a fairy. I guess it means they want minus three to fairy right now. Okay, so they didn't have the security shroud. Okay. That would have been a problem. Well, this could also be a problem, at least if they have another land to go with this. And they find. And the deck has like 28 lands, right? So this almost never misses. It feels pretty hard to miss on a 28er. Is that a trigger? It is a trigger. Okay. Plus the fairy. Oh, actually the Grazer has reach. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> oh, they're just gonna kill that fairy. Oh, this, this might mean they have another one, actually. If I had to guess. No? It's the second Grazer. Huh. Okay. Well... Now we are kind of in business. I 
I think I'll just give up my Arcanist here. Doesn't really do much, and I really would like this Legionnaire to become uh, better. So we give this one pro green. Yeah, this is what we want. Because the as long as Feather's in play, um, nothing is ever going to hit the graveyard anyway, so the Arcanist doesn't actually do much. Yeah, let's just do pro green right now. And then every turn we're just going to make this one protection from, from green. And attack. Alright. Kill your rejuvenator. And I think mm, the lieutenant in play doesn't do much either. So maybe it is better to just get another count on my legionnaire. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Because they're probably gonna make another zombie now. So having this one be bigger is better. Oh no, okay. Well, that resolves. Is it 8 lands? Yeah, it is. 16 zombies. So... I guess I can't beat this? Maybe I should have paid the lieutenant, but I still think it's not enough. Because it's like... It's a lot of damage. So... What if I... What if I find another God's Willing, so I can keep protection from green and black? Maybe that works? I don't think my Legionnaire will be big enough though. Yeah, and yet again this one comes into play untapped. Nineteen triggers, look at all this. Man, isn't it beautiful? This is where it's very, very ugly noise, I'd say. This is where um, Deputy Detention would be a nice card to have access to. I mean, not that we can do that in Naya, but you get the idea. Oh, just make two more zombies. Let's try twice more. Oh, well, I guess I'll just do this. Obviously, I'm still scrying to the top, I think. Yeah, I think no matter what, I still want this to find strike. But it's only a 4, it's gonna grow to like 6, 7, 8 damage. Yeah, it's not gonna be enough. I certainly can't take a hit from all these zombies. So I don't really know what my plan is exactly. But I guess we'll have to figure it out. So do pro black. Oh, there actually is the second god swelling. But still, it doesn't do enough. Yeah, it's only... It's not enough damage. They can also block the feather. Yeah, I'm just gonna concede. Scry top, concede. The classic. The classic. Okay. Well, that was interesting. Teferi is certainly very good. Um, I do think we want these two cards, please. At least, like, a 2-2 two -two split. I think the Dummer's Ambushes are great. The Reckless Rages. Yeah, I think they're still pretty good. Just, like, dealing with these annoying jump blockers without spending a card, I think, is very important. Alright. I guess they also have hands a lot where they can't cast Grease to turn 1. So now that we're under play, we go turn 2 to Katli. I guess it's more impactful. Though I guess also pretty often the Grease won't actually have an ETB effect because they just auto lands. Uh, this hand has Feather. It's pretty slow. I think it's a still keep. We're gonna try and scry hard for Shockland so that we're um, live. It's pretty powerful, the sand. 
The I think the spellbreaker lines up pretty well against their creatures, so definitely don't need this reckless rage. Ah, sad. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna cycle this one now. I am sure I want to make the grazer bigger, and there we go. Perfectly calculated. Uh, the reason I wanted to just spear it there is because I do have the Arcanist now, so I can always bring it back. Well, not always, I guess. But I think I'll just make my Spellbreaker haste here. And, yeah, it'll just be awkward for them. Because, like, they'll have to lose their Grazer in order to keep the Teferi alive, and then, like, what, are they bouncing my Spellbreaker, and I can just attack Teferi again? It's not especially good for them. And now this ambush can come in really handy. Trust me, I have a plan. Oh, prison realm. Oh, okay, oh, that's annoying. Oh, that's actually really annoying. I think I just play Feather here. I can go like... it If this one goes up to 4... Yeah, I mean I can just like Dumbers Ambush, kill the Grazer and attack it. So I think the Teferi is going down here. Or I can like Defiant Strike and Reckless Rage, that might even be better. Oh, even better, I can just Domris Ambush on the Teferi and attack their face. So that my Feather is growing stronger. I think I'll just leave up the God's Willing here. Uh, it means that if they have a second Teferi, I can just respond to that by... Uh, like, so that they can't bounce my Feather. Which I really would not want to have happen here, and also protects them from Prison Realm, so yeah, let's do that. But we can always- I put a stop in their second main phase, so I can cast a Fine Strike and still have it for my turn. Yeah, this is a pretty good way to, like, just have a giant flyer and beat some zombies. Dumbish Ambush keeps growing at every turn. Okay. I can just ambush that, so I think I'll just, like, draw a card, try and find some more lands. I can also just Reckless Rage it, so we are pretty much in business. Obviously, we are at the risk of some zombies very soon. Huh, Season. I think that's worth doing. Does mean that we can't cast Ambush, but I think we're still fine. Hmm. Yeah, I think we do want to draw some extra cards here. Try and find an untapped land so we can God's Willing. Oh, we did not. Okay. Well, we'll have to just cut some cards here. It'll probably just be some Arcanists, because they don't really do much at this stage. Razor. Oh, did you also have a Scape Shift here? Because that would be painful. That landscape shift in hand. It looks like a scape shift. Ah. We do have a god swirling and yeah, I think because we missed on the land, I think we don't have enough. Because we can pull. Because we can play a Legionnaire. Kill off Gracer. Yeah, and they also have two creatures. Hmm. Maybe I did get to, to agree playing out the seasonal growth. Maybe. I could have certainly gone more aggressive, just like ambush, Godswilling. 
The fire strike? Hmm. Okay, well, there is the extra land. So we can go Legionnaire. Uh, God's Willing. Oh, they actually attacked there. But they also have way more life now. God's Willing, Reckless Rage, Defiant Strike. This just won't be enough, right? There'll be 6 10 damage. Yeah. Yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to to produce lethal here. Yeah, potentially it was too greedy to play the season there. I did, I must admit I did not expect to actually be facing a big scapeshift that turn, so maybe we should have done that math more correctly. By the way, the scapeshift deck seems super cool. Um, I know that uh, Luis Scott Vargas is playing it this weekend in Denver, and like, I, I guess he must he might you know me more with deck choices at a hometown GP, but. Yeah, I just don't think we can get there. It's like, even if you draw a billion cards, it's just not enough. Not really sure what I'm hoping to find here. As you can see, we are totally going off, and if we did have another turn, like this would be very easy to win. But as it stands, we do not have another turn. We can only put our opponents to four life. So that's too bad. I should, by the way, think more about how I order these triggers. Yeah, I guess the land drop didn't actually matter. Because even if we had another land there and like, you know, the extra Defiant Strike, it was still not lethal. Hmm. Did win a bunch of gold though. I wonder if you could use something like Flame Sweep to beat the to beat that sequence. It seems weird to have Flame Sweep against the Scape Shift deck, but it also seems like the only way I lose is to them just like Scape Shifting with eight lands and they kill them in the turn after. Because I don't really have like the only way I have to beat that is to kill them, which is not that easy. This end is certainly a keep. Ambush plus Ambush plus Arcanist is just such a great combination. You make a 3-5, kill two things. Even can kill planeswalkers. Yeah, I'll keep the feather on top here. Thank you very much. Against mono red. Okay. In that case, we will have to play it a little bit more carefully. So I think... I'll lead up with the Stone Lieutenant. Maybe I should lead off with the Arcanist. Because if they play a Steamkin, I definitely want to kill it. Oh, interesting. So they have Light of the Stage now? Okay. They do have the land. And is, is this a skewer of the critics? Probably not. They'll probably just play a runner, right? I have to guess. Nope. They are skewering. Okay. Well, we can't protect our Arcanist. 
I can hold it until I can play it plus ambush. Maybe that's not the worst. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, they were still spamming the cat, so I have to disable emotes. It's very rude. Yeah, well, I just don't want them to have good use of lightning strike. I could just play fe feather, actually. Yeah, let's just play feather. Like, they would have to have a one mana burn spell. So it has to be, like, land shock in order to punish me here. So I think I'm okay with that. Obviously, if they play the Leveron and just attack, I am taking the damage every time. I guess it could also be land uh, firebrand. Oh, well, they do have exactly that. Land firebrand. Okay. Well, that's fine. Did it? Ooh, okay. Well, now we drew the, the God Swelling. It's okay, though. I think well, the giant Arcanist here can just win the game. We're at 16 life. We're not really in burn range here. We have our creatures protected from burn. Um... Okay, so I'm thinking a lot about how to proceed next turn. I could save my uh, my elf token here and make turn it into a two two. Don't think that will give me that much. That's yeah, okay. Ooh. Well, hello. All right. So now, no, actually. Yeah, I think I'll just play it a little bit safer here, leave up the God Swelling. I won't get to flashback anything right now. I'll get to put pressure on, but I think this is still fine. I hope they play two creatures. Mm. Alright, well that's actually quite problematic. Let's see who has the better card of Edge Engine. I suspect it might be them. I'm not gonna attack here. I should definitely have played the land though. Okay. Well, hope you don't have another instant speed burn. Do you? Be very tilting. It has to be exactly lightning strike as well, so. Okay, protection from red. So now we're safe. So, okay, they had shock on top. That makes sense that we're considering how to use those that card. They're not playing out any creature, so it means I still can't cast the ambush, which is, yeah, quite the tilt, honestly. Uh, just have this with a plus counter. Use feather. Also, I get to attack and draw a card because I get to flashback the God's Willing. Yeah, I think I actually Feather is fine because I can uh, I can still play it this turn. So attack here. Protection from red, scry one. I definitely don't need the second ambush right now. Alright, well, we do have a two turn clock established, and this card is gonna be amazing, so. Okay. Okay, we did assemble some things, and it didn't hit a land drop last turn, so. And now it hit two, so that's. That is awkward. Because the Frenzy is much, much more scary when it hits lands every turn, so you can cast continu continually more spells. Ooh. 
Ooh, the Legionnaire too. Nice. And the Lieutenant. Eh, I guess I could use this. Just more pressure. Alright, well, I don't think they can stabilize here. We'll, we'll see. They do have six mana to work with, but... Given that I have all these lethal threats and ambush in hand as well, it seems pretty tough. I genuinely have been winning against Mono Red. It, it wouldn't seem like it's a good matchup because you play all these Shocklands, but... It's just quite easy to... Like, you block very well with the cards you have. Um, do you want to board in Shock and Lever Coil? We don't need the Season of Growth in this matchup. And on the draw, I want to board out an ambush. Because if they play turn 2 Steamkin, it needs to kill it right away, and Ambush can't do that. Um, I do not board into Kaidly Honor Guard. It might seem like something you'd want to do against Chain Whirler and, um, and Vichy and the Power Mantra. But actually, like, first of all, people have cut the Power Mantra from the deck lately. And second of all, um, they probably part cut it post-board anyway, because it just doesn't line up very well against my creatures. And Chain Whirler doesn't kill anything anyway, because like all my creatures survive Shock and... Like even Imbahorl and such if they have that, so those cards are just pretty poor. And I, I'm guessing that that is the reason why I'm generally coming out ahead against Mono Red, is that they have to spend a lot of resources dealing with my creatures, and sometimes you, you just have God Swilling and you can negate all that. And the blockers are very good, like the Tenant and Spellbreaker are just incredible. So you could board in it to Mystify actually. I've considered that, maybe I should do that, over, like, try it over an ambush, we'll see. Also, if they have um, the four mana Chandra, Fire Artisan, uh, Spellbreaker is incredible against that card. Um, if you don't know why, well, um, just hopefully you get to try it once. It is it is awesome. Because Chandra says deals damage to an opponent or Planeswalker, um, so you can't target yourself. And with Spellbreaker in play, you have Hexproof on your turn, so you just like play it with haste, attack Chandra, and uh, she has no choice but to target a Planeswalker, which will be herself. So. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty awesome interaction. This hand is not great. Um, but it can be very, very good. If they just go, like, Steamkin into Chain Whirler. So I think I'm going to keep it. Because if that's the sequence, we get to... Uh, go turn 2 Arcanist. Turn 3. Ooh, okay. Well, I'm gonna bottom the feather here because we definitely just need the land. So turn two Arcanist, turn three D Legionnaire, Reckless Rage, attack, flashback, Reckless Rage. I'll have a pretty big board at that point. And I'm definitely just jamming my Arcanist here. Because I do have it back up anyway if they kill it. Which they do. I do need to draw land pretty soon here so I can. Kill the steam kid on sight. Yeah, they're gonna go pretty aggro. It makes sense though. That shock to the face is a lot of damage and doesn't do anything in defense anyway. Alright, well. Did not hit a land, so we'll just have to play the Arcanist again. And see how they play this. The second lightning strike is rough now. So yeah, this is why you can see the reason why I bought in stuff like shock and, and lever coil. Is that if you can kill the steam kid on sight, it's way safer for you. Okay, well, we can play the Legionnaire. Oh, we're still dead, right? Because the Ember Hollow will just kill us. Because no matter if you block it or not, like, it doesn't have to tap to use its ability. Yeah, Ember Hollow is pretty good. So the only way we survive here is if they use Ember Hollow to kill our Legionnaire. So that's the hope here. Because otherwise, like, we block Lever Runner, we take two from Ember Hall and they shoot us. Or we block the Ember Hall and they just shoot us before damage. So, like, no matter what, we're... Alright, well, the letter resolves, so we're gonna be dead. We definitely can't afford a Shark Land, so let's just bottom that. No attacks for sure. And yeah, they saw the line. Oh, also they have Fry anyway, so it doesn't matter. Alright. Well, that game definitely showcased how you can lose to Mono Red.
Um, so I think on the play, I do like to just have Thumbers Ambush. I really like its ability to bring your creatures out of range of their branch spells. Um, and it also just puts more pressure on them. And I, I, like on the play, you can play your two drop and if they play Steamkin, you can just kill it. Like it's, this matchup is a lot better on the play for that reason. Like you saw the awkwardness there that I had two answers to Steamkin, but I just couldn't deploy them because they, like Reckless Rage is basically a turn three card. You really can't cast it sooner. Um, this hand is a little slow. Hmm, okay. This hand is actually quite awkward. I think I'm gonna mulligan this hand. Yeah, it's two shock lands, so I'm forced to... T I guess I'm not forced to take damage, because you can't do anything on turn two anyway, so I'll just play it tapped. But I am forced to draw another land, so I can, like, turn three play a thing. And then I can start doing stuff. So this hand just, like, falls to our coil. I think I'm gonna mulligan it. Oh no. Well. I do not have red mana. This hand is pretty great though. But how do I want to play it? Turn one foundry, turn two grove. Play arcanist maybe? Or maybe the arcanist is bad in this hand. I think. Oh wait. I th think we can play it like this. And we'll see. We don't have any removal though, uh, so we'll have to draw that. But. Okay, I'm just gonna run out the Arcanist here. Because now they have to have Lightning Strike or Lava Coil, otherwise their Steamkin is dying. And they do have it. Okay. Well, at least we draw an, draw an answer to Steamkin there. But obviously, I'm very scared that my feather is gonna die to burn. And they do not have Steamkin, they do have Chain Word instead. So. And that played out pretty poorly for me. And I just have to run out the Legionnaire here because I need to uh, have a creature in play before I cast my removal spells. As you see, the main reason with the mono red matchup is exactly the sequence. But both times we lost here was because of missed land drops. And it's likely that I shouldn't have put the land on, on bottom. Okay, well, at least they bricked on the, the light of the stage. Oh, well. Not quite. Hate to see it. Okay, well I think that's just gonna be game. I have to cycle this on their creature. Play it's half land. I'm not sure I can afford to shock damage. Maybe I can, and I should just have put that on top so I can protect my feather with God dwelling. Yeah, actually, I think I could afford the shock damage. So that was too greedy. So they attack now, and I kill the Firebrand. Yeah, I would have fallen to 10 life, which I think is safe enough. With the shock land, so. And now, like, I just can't block a Chain Whirl, it's way too risky. But if I have God's Willing up, it's actually not that risky. Oh wow. Well, at least they just hit more lands. But, never punished. Okay, well, now we actually just got rewarded for it, <laughs> bottoming the shark land. I saved two points of life. And didn't need to draw an unnecessary land. If they have two fries here, or like lava coil plus fry, that's an issue. But other than that, it's pretty good for us. They can also attack first, and. I might have to cast God's Willing uh, before damage. So like I block and cast God's Willing. Um, and then they can respond with Fry, but I'm not sure if they would play it like that. Maybe. Okay, they just start with the Fry. And it worked. Okay. Well, now I'm actually feeling pretty good. I don't think I need another land here. I'd rather just find more blockers. Actually, like, I don't really think I need much at this point. Because they can't really attack. Oh, they can play a Frenzy. So, I just need... I just need to take over this game. Question is if I can allow myself to attack here. Mm, let's scry one and figure that out. 
Because we do have a free scry one here. I think I cannot. But it would be a right clock would be a turn shorter, right? Maybe not. So I have to God's willing this, I think. Yeah, but that's fine. Hopefully they don't have lightning strike on top as well. Second feather doesn't do it. Okay, Reckless Rage also helps with the situation. I might want to God's Willing in there. No, wait, I can't do that because I want to cast the Reckless Rage. Hmm. But I kind of do want them to. S yeah, I think I'll just pass the turn. Oh, wait, I can still do the upkeep. I can do Reckless Rage on their Ember Hauler. And they'll sacrifice it targeting something, and then I'll respond with the God's Willing. I think that works. Yeah, and I, I, I'll have priority. Like, they'll have priority first, so I can make sure that the, God, the Reckless Rage will never end up damaging my creature. So even if they have Lightning Strike on top, for instance. Okay. Now we just do this. Hmm. I kind of like this Defiant Strike. So this will be, yeah, it actually increases the clock, so I'll put that on top. Because we'll attack for 7 next turn and then for 8 the turn after. So it's actually pretty important. Okay, so I just have to hope that they draw a little bit creature heavy here. A feather is becoming large enough that it actually doesn't matter to keep up protection. Alright, there we go. But... We have to survive the burn damage here. It's a little tough. They also have enough, like, they have three cards in hand now, and they can easily just crack the frenzy at the end step. If they have a land on top here. So that's also something I need to be aware of. Um, let's start by doing this. Oh, we didn't get the Reckless Rage back. I did not realize that. That's pretty funny. Um, so what happened there was that both targets were illegal. Because I gave my creature protection from red and the Ember Hollow was no longer in play. So it actually never resolved. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, let's kill off a Firebrand here. And I think we might just shock the other one, actually. Don't fall to seven life? Hmm, maybe. Though on the other hand, it could be good to keep up the... We can always shock it when it attacks, so... Yeah, let's just hold on. Alright, but it is lethal next turn. We actually also didn't really need to cast the Defiant Strike, but... Yeah, I think it was fine to do. Let's see if they crack the frenzy here. They do not. Another Emperor Hauler. Sure thing. So with five life effectively? Oh yeah, that's the reason to kill the fire range. They might just not attack with it. Oh no. Three life. Uh, 
pass. Huh. Okay. Well, I think I'm just attacking without doing anything. Put him to two life, and then I'll start doing stuff. Like Dumber saying, the Ember Hauler. Force them to crack it, then I can respond with a shock. Yeah, I think that's how I want to do it. So that in case they had some sort of instant speed way to do stuff, um, I won't allow them to do that. Uh, shock you. Who's the burn deck now? Hmm? Hmm? Oh no. <laughs> no, no, please. Please, no. A card you could play for this matchup, by the way, is Healing Grace. Because it's like, t prevent all damage to the target creature, gain free life. But we did get the win there, so... Nice. Nice. Okay, here's the last match against someone random, uh, and uh, that is actually their name, not um, or their username at least. Uh, not not, I'm I'm not just calling my opponent someone random. Uh, yep. All three colors do have creatures and things to target them with. So, and even and even a shock. So, if I knew my opponent was a Simic Grand deck. Where my life total doesn't matter. Whether or not I had the shock in hand, I would take two damage on turn one. Uh, because this leads them to, they might just like play around our shock and not play that animal wealth. So that's a pretty cute interaction. But the way things stand, I'm definitely not gonna take the shock damage. And the fact that I was thinking probably makes them realize I have shock in hand. But whatever. In fact, we would have been paid off if we had uh, just done the shocking. I'm gonna pass here. Well, let's just kill this thing. And since we do have a god swelling, I think I can allow myself to play this a little slower. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty good. But once again, I should have made sure it tapped differently so it actually left up red mana too. So if you can use Dumb Resamblers to make this a bigger creature, that's going to be very lovely. That's not happening though. But we'll just give this one protection from white so that their Vanguard can't even attack. Yeah, just leave this temple on top. I think I want to expose my feather here. They don't have that many ways to kill it, and um, I do want to just get my God's Willing back right now. Not sure I should put the land on the bottom. Yeah, actually, probably shouldn't. But I'm definitely gonna flash back the God's Willing here. So I can, I can make up for my mistake by putting this land on top. But... Eh. Because, like, being able to cast District district Legionnaire, Dormer Sambers, and keep up God Swelling is pretty valuable next turn. So, yeah, I think I should have kept the, the check land on top, but I think bottoming the shock land is correct. Because it's a pretty close decision, but, like, taking that two extra damage is not something I'm particularly interested in. Alright, well, they do let us on top with Feather, so 
that's probably gonna be game. Yeah, they just scoop here. I mean, it, I also have the shock to flashback, so it would just be gross. And probably what I would do is I would um, Dombris ambush on my uh, on my Arcanist at uh, and, and kill their uh, kill their their Lord, and then attack, and I would use shock to target my own feather, so I'd get it right back to hand, and uh, and I'll basically like get an extra use out of my my Arcanist. So it'd be pretty gross. Now, like, clear the board. There's only be there would only be an uh, a dent of Vanguard in play, which I could just I could also just leave back feather actually, to block that one. It would be pretty trivial to win from that spot. Because I think I would be very much in control. I actually didn't need to take any damage, or I didn't need to like deal any damage, so I can just like play super defensively and not take any damage as well. Anyway, in this matchup, definitely board in the shocks. Um, the lever coil on the on the draw. Board of the ambush, uh, board of the season, board of one ambush. And I think you can also board in a veil, but I think that's more thing you want to do in the play. So, I don't do it right now. Uh, stuff like Thorn Attendant can also be put, can also be um, boarded out. The reason that I don't want to board in Veil of Summer on the draw is that they're going to be in the play, so they might have like less removal spells. I wouldn't put like the average arena player on boarding differently play a draw, but they could, they certainly could. And uh, and also like on the draw, like leaving up that mana can be a pretty big tempo loss for me. Um, whereas on the play, like I'm gonna be ahead of land, so I can actually afford that. And also on the play, I might need the extra card as well from the protection. So, but I think right now this is how I'm gonna sideboard. Uh, you can also board in the honor guard if you see um, something like the dusk, le dusk legion legionnaire. That's not what it's called, right? The, the two mana 1-1 one, one that draws a card when it enters the battlefield. And you lose one life. If you see that, in addition to the Martyr of Dusk, which is the five mana creature that draws a card for each vampire you control, I think they have enough into the battlefield effects that you can reasonably play the Zocatliana Guides. Or at least some number of them. Like, Zocatli is... You don't want to bring in all three if they're, like, not good versus that many cards in their deck, because it's pretty bad in multiples. So you kind of want to avoid that happening. Hmm. Speaking of avoid that happening, this hand does not have double red, which is actually an issue. But other than that, I think it's pretty good. I'm just going to keep this one. I do have a number of good draws. Uh, that's the worst card we could have drawn. Because, like, turn three, I really want to go uh, second Arcanist and Reckless Rage. So, yeah, all these non-red lands are somewhat problematic. Oh yeah, and they're gonna grow up their knight. That's neat. Alright, well, that's that was a good draw, so... Let's pay out Arcanist. It might die, but we can still next turn go Arcanist plus Reckless Rage. And if it doesn't die, we get to kill two things here. Which is quite important. Like, let's say they just play a Vampire Lord. We get to clear their Knight of Ebon Legion and their Legion Descendant, yeah. I hope they also don't have a 1-drop here. Because that would be... That would, then they would be able to block and kill the Arcanist. But actually, I would have 2 in that spot, so it's probably fine. Because I've got to have 2 damage dealt to each of my Arcanists. Obviously, this is going to be pretty big right now, but... Um, but I can kill the Lieutenant as well, so it will be okay. So, kill your Lieutenant and... The one I just played. And just in case they had this figure, I can still attack and flashback it. So yeah, that was a nice 2 for 1. Issue is, our hand is 4 lands. So, a 2 for 1 is actually not that great for us. Because we're like, very far behind on cards here. Uh, but we can... There's still draws like a fine strike into a spell would be incredible. Like, Dormer's Ambush would be incredible. There's ways we can... We can make this work. Also, the elite at Enter Vanguard is an issue. Um, usually, the way you beat that is by having a 4 draft this creature. And you and try to clear up all their lords. But it's not easy. Certainly not easy. I wonder if they're gonna just pay 4 life again. They are, okay. I guess that's the way you can beat it, just having them pay 4 life too many times. Hmm. Alright, here I'm gonna. 
Block Vanguard, block Aspirant. Take some damage from the Legion. They might not attack with the Aspirant, to be honest. And then I can use the God's Willing to... Yeah, they're not gonna attack with that. Block here. I could also block the, the Knight of Even Legion. That time walks them. Save me a bunch of life. Hmm. I think not. Uh, maybe. I'm kind of into that whole time walking thing. Like, forcing them to spend the mana. And also, that, that keeps my other Arcanist more safe. Yeah, I think it's fine. Now it doesn't actually matter which Arcanist I use the, the God's Willing one. So I'll do this. They still have priority to do something. Okay. So this makes me think that they have uh, Mortify. But actually, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah, I still should just do this. So if they have Mortify to kill an Arcanist now, then yeah, this works out. <laughs> so protection from white. Feather on top. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's a Forge of this creature. And we're gonna be able to attack and regrow this God's Willing, so... Okay, that actually worked out pretty well for us. The whole... Uh, time walking them thing. So yeah, let's... Play Feather. Attack with Arcanist. Man, that interaction is just so strong. That is the exact interaction that makes this deck. And I... Do you think that in play design they, you know, worded the cards so that this would actually be possible? Oh yeah, Reckless Rage is exactly what I want here. Uh, issue is that this knight might grow too large for me. Maybe. Maybe it won't. Block here, they pump, I got a one life. I think that's fine. Um, if they have Sorin, they can't kill me now, but I can't kill the Sorin either. If they pump the, the knight, they put me to one life, and then actually, hmm. Actually, what if I block the knight here? Yeah, that's way better, I think. I pump the knight, they play Sorin. Like if they pump their if they pump their knight now, I just get to God's Willing. To save my thing. And if they play Sorin Sacrifice a creature to shoot me. I get to kill both the vampires, but it, they would just need a vampire then to kill me. I don't know, I think this is the best block. You have a Sorin, okay. Oh, by the way, this is a good reason to have the Autumn's Veil as well, because that actually works with Sorin. Mm, all right, so oh, they also gain life. That's awkward. Yeah, we don't quite have enough here to, and this one is too big that I. Can... I can't actually kill this one with Reckless Rage. Yeah, I didn't actually consider that this would grow. From Reckless Rage. I probably should have just blocked the Vanguard then. Had them pay the life. Also, since they made such an aggressive attack, it was like... I probably could tell that they had Sorin. And they probably wouldn't... I'm not sure how fine they would be just putting me to one, but also leaving themselves very vulnerable to some stuff. Hmm. Well, this Reckless Rage is not going to save me, right? It just isn't. So I think I have to scry that to the bottom. Oh wait, are we in the end step? Oh uh, no, I forgot to put the stop in the right place. So in that case, it doesn't actually matter to have a uh, stop in my draw step. But yeah, I would need... Define strike into some more. And that doesn't cut it. 
Alright, so I'm just dead now. Nothing in my graveyard, right? Yeah. Hmm, yeah, it felt like a game we actually ended, like, it, or the Star Trek pretty bad, but it didn't seem like we were getting control. But, Sorn is, Sorn is pretty good. I don't think I want Lava Coil on the play, so. Let's just have one Wave of Summer. They might also bring into Res, which makes the Veil of Summer have a little bit more utility. It isn't the greatest. Speaking of not the greatest, this hand is certainly not it. But maybe it's still a keep? We have the mana, we have the protection, and we have a shock. I think this is a keep, actually. Maybe I should just go to 5, though. Now, I'm, I'm gonna try and keep the 6 and see what happens. We might just, we might just lose horribly, but... We'll take that. One thing you can play in the sideboard is Baffling End to deal with the Dancer Vanguard. More easily, that's certainly a very legit option. Okay. I think I'd rather kill the Lord than the Aspirant, so. Mm, I'm just gonna kill this one right now, though. They could be holding, like, holding on to play the Lord Force Combat, maybe. But, okay. I mean, still gonna hold on to my Defiant Strike, not just cycle it at random here, because it's it can be pretty important if I draw a Feather, that I still have the Defiant Strike. Though, since I I bought out my Season of Growth, there's like... Oh, interesting, okay. So the hand might be very, um... Ugh. It is a creature, but it's not very good. Well, I guess I do have six lands very soon. I could just define strike now to get this one into play. I don't want to do that. Oh wait, actually, this thing is going to be too big for our pumped Thorn Lieutenant. So it was probably just a big mistake to keep that on top. I think I'm just going to cycle now. Yeah, because it's, it's going to be 7-7, seven, seven, right? Or 8, a 6-7. My creature is also going to be a 6-7, but they're just going to have Death Touch, so it doesn't quite work. Okay, well, at least it doesn't grow now. Maybe. Now they play Champion of Dust, store some cards. Yeah, this game certainly didn't go the way I wanted it to, but it's also a pretty risky keep. Uh, which I'm still not sure is actually a... Why did they grow? If a player lost four more life... Oh, they shocked themselves with Goddess Shrine and they... Wow, that's incredible. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. That's just sacred games. Oh, I just saved leap modes. Okay, well, um, that's gonna wrap it up for the Feather games. Obviously, it didn't go too well here. Uh, and you could definitely see some of the consistency issues with the deck. There were a lot of mulligans. Um, one thing though that was never a problem was having green mana, so, which is like, you know, the cards, we cut some mountains for stepping grounds, we cut some planes for temple gardens, right, so, um, so if you consider like the three color versus two color version because of the mana, like, I don't really think that's the issue except for the extra damage you take from Sharklands, um, but, but what can be an issue is just like inherently with the feather decks. In, uh, in that, like, they do need to draw the right cards in order to get off the ground. In this game, we just didn't get off the ground at all. So, uh, it was actually pretty close, though, in 
into game two there. And yeah, I feel like we were very close to winning, but not quite. Anyway, uh, I'll just disable the emotes and tell my opponent good games. So, yep. Thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully see you next time.